An Xbox exec says something controversial right before Next Generation launch again. See as Aaron Greensburg hypes xCloud as filling Next Generation and see gamers' responses. Let's get into it. What's up, people? What's up, people? What's up, people? It is your boy, MM2K, back again with another video. Do me a huge favor before we get into this one. Hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button. Rock those bells for notifications, please, so you know when your boy's dropping these doses. I appreciate all y'all straight up. Y'all know the deal. Y'all know the reason. Y'all know the slogan. I am not too proud to ask. Let's get into it. All right. So, let, let's, no further ado, let's just go straight to the tweet. All right. So Aaron Greenberg of Microsoft, you can see over here to the right, he is the GM of Xbox Games Marketing at Microsoft, uh, Microsoft board member, all right? And, oh no, he's a board member at Games Outreach Tech or whatever, okay. He brings up this article from VG247, which is a stretch, and we're gonna get into where something looks a little fuddy-duddy here. Uh, but we'll get into that a little bit. And he re he retweets this article from VG247 because, it, it, you know, it, it says, playing Xbox Game Pass through xCloud feels like a next generation experience. Now, here's the thing. It's a free, it's a free world, a free country, whatever, wherever they're from, it, it's free. You know what I mean? I think VG247 might be out of the UK, so it's, it's a free country over there too. If they want to get high on their own supply and say things like that, that's fine. But the fact that they are looking for any positive news, Xbox, and they're willing to retweet it, I, I don't know. It, it would be like me going out there, creating an article that says on broadbandbullies.com saying that Stadia chores lupus um, and it, it, it saved a, a, a dozen babies from erupting volcanoes within the last five minutes. If somebody, if I'm, if I want to be, you know, loaded up on shrooms and, and high out of my mind, and I want to put an article out there like that, that's on me. But when I, if Google were to go to retweet something like that, that's a reflection on them. Okay. And so, in light of that, here's the response. I want y'all to look at th this feed. Let me let me see if I can bump this up a little bit. Okay, so we got the good friend of, uh, of mine, Clive Linden. He has roots with um, various companies, signing contracts with PlayStation, stuff like that. He's, he, he, you know, he, he got some lineage here. Clive says, article's almost identical to, to one on Tom's hardware, hmm, which stated it was amazing you could play a game across so many devices on TV via Xbox console, blah, blah, blah. And that's what made it brilliant. Er, hello, stated does that and arguably better. <laughs> so, you know, we, we, you know we, got, we got the Stadia Warriors out there, you know, just, just sharing the truth. But the fact that it's so similar to Tom Hardware's, you know, article, you know, got, got you a little peculiar because the article is just weird. We got the homie Hendo, also a Stadia Warrior out there. But we got other people in general, even Xbox people in the in the fray. Like, hold on, pump your brakes. Uh, we got this guy, he says, never saw Xbox One S level games running on the phone, so what? Sure, if you consider 720p, 20, uh, 30 frames per second, next generation. Uh, Art and Soul uh, says, just ignore all criticisms, pretend everything is normal strategy. Blake. Uh, says, Uncle Phil, hey Aaron, I'm gonna need you to go dance, tell everybody that next gen 480, 720p input lag came pass on xCloud. Don't forget to tell all of our influencers, bootlickers, to buy $1,000 Samsung phones as well. Golly, come on, Blake, don't do that to him. Hurry, Aaron, my puppet, dance, Aaron, dance. And Aaron out here, buck dancing. Don't be top dog. Just not but laughs. And then we got the homie Hazardor Gaming, who is a known Xbox fanatic all over Twitter. He loves every Xbox show. And he's he tweet Xbox, Xbox. Even he says it's cool for people who enjoy it, but never gonna pull out a phone to play games on it. Console life is best life. In other words, come on, man. Like, like let's chill out with this. Cause X Cloud right here, as Blake <laughs> put it. It's like 720p, 48, whatever it is on the phone. Ain't nothing about that next gen, what we want out of next gen. 
okay? And it just gets worse and worse. I'm not even gonna do that to Xbox no more. Let me let me go back here. So here's the problem. Because I'm gonna see a lot of people in my comments. You're hating on Xbox. Why, why must you bring another man down to bring another man up? No, 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 no. It's all about Xbox having focus. Yes, am I disappointed that Microsoft or Xbox that used to be known for the pillar of technology, particularly when it came to gaming? Like nobody was touching Xbox in gaming. That wasn't, as far as technology was concerned, that was the last in the list of, of, of maybe uh, negative things that you had to say about the Xbox platform. It was never technology was at the top of that list. But it seems like everything that they try to technically get into, they, they, they either implement it poorly, you know, where they got the most powerful console, but they ain't got no games with it, or they're dead last in, in performance. And in this case with xCloud, with performance, they're dead last. We did the study on broadband bullies. I'm not going to show y'all the chart again. Those that are interested that can be considered cloud gamers that are willing to make purchasing decisions on cloud gaming, not people that just want to take it with it maybe for a couple weeks and go away, but people that are willing to make purchasing decisions on cloud gaming. The overwhelming majority of those people play on PCs, laptops, and TVs. XCloud doesn't offer that. And even on phone play, it is the worst service on phone play. Even GFN, which I'm not the biggest fan of on phones, plays better than XCloud. I can get 60 frames per second gaming on, on GFN. And then the thing with XCloud right now is it's an extension of Game Pass, which Game Pass might be the most popular game subscription service, but game subscription services all around are not that popular. Again, you're talking about the majority of a minority. The minority of gamers have a game subscription service. Even the majority of Xbox gamers don't have Xbox Game Pass. There are 50 to 60 million Xboxes out there. There are 10 to 20 million Xbox Game Pass subscriptions. Stop it. Stop. So there's nothing next gen about that. So for those of you that want to say I'm just hating, no, we just got to go to the real deal numbers and look at the raw facts. Okay? And here's the problem overall. For those of you that are in the silo that Xbox can't do no wrong and Phil is here to stay forever and ever, please, Jesus, please, <laughs> those that are in that crowd, this is why y'all are disconnected from the average gamer. When you say next gen, the average gamer, from Xbox at least, wants to see high fidelity games, games that show the awesomeness of 60 frames per second plus gaming, Altogether new gaming experiences and xCloud right now is just a way to play your game at a lesser level nothing about playing xCloud right now feels next gen to the average gamer all right it's bringing nothing new to the end user that has those particular expectations now Again, the people that want to label me just purely a hater will say, well, MM2K, you ain't got no solutions. What's your solution? What's your solution? I got the solutions, but y'all don't want to listen. Y'all just want to praise Phil and try to use y'all flip phones to, to, to take pictures of the man from 50 feet away and just love him and hug him. Stop it. If you're a gamer, you got to put their feet to the fire. And right now, we're at the 11th hour. Not too much is going to change. It's just going to be a rocky... Rocky few years for Xbox if things continue on this trajectory. But there's still some positive light that you can get out of all of this. Here's a solution. If they as an Xbox really want this xCloud uh, Ultimate Game Pass combo to mean something, then they got to do something big. Having a subscription service that even the majority of your current gamer base don't care about. Being the fact that the biggest game coming to the system has now been pushed back. You got to do something big. 
and that's something big is you got to get a triple a heavy hitter in game pass for 30 days now if you follow your boy you know i've been advocating for this all over twitter all over social media all over podcasts i think that triple a game because you already got the marketing deal with cyberpunk 2077 I think for the first 30 days that Cyberpunk 2077 is out for retail, once it launches, it launches in the Game Pass. And that's going to cost you a pretty penny. And I know Game Pass isn't structured that way. Um, Aaron Greenberg, the aforementioned laughable Aaron Greenberg, mentioned so to Gamertag Radio. Shout out to, to Danny Pena of Gamertag Radio for landing that interview. I think it was at GamesCon or either at a, um, E3 where they talked about third parties dropping their games day and day, AAA games that is, and Game Pass. And Aaron Greenberg flat out said, no, the model isn't shaped that way, meaning we ain't shelling, we ain't writing checks for that. And I understand why. But your first party content isn't hitting right now. And you need to jolt to the system. So you got to find at least one AAA game that's going to be the exception. That get people's mouths watered. And what no other game, I don't think there's any better game right now than Cyberpunk 2077. Again, you already got the marketing deal. Y'all got to work something out. 30 days at least, game pass. After the fact, make it a discount on Xbox for those that want to keep it. And then on top of that, you know what I'm saying? You just got to forego some money. After that, instead of charging 30% for the release of the game to, to, to smooth over the deal, just charge 20% to uh, CD Projekt Red to sweeten the deal. You're gonna, yeah, you're gonna be shelling out a lot of money on this deal, but it's something you gotta do. You gotta give a jolt to the system. You got to do something. Because on all that litmus that I said earlier, high fidelity looking games, games that show the awesomeness of 60 frames per second plus on new games, not not old stuff, altogether new gaming experiences. Uh, on that litmus, you're failing. You're failing to, 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 to demonstrate that. And I don't want to hear, well, PlayStation ain't doing that. People are already sold on PlayStation. And you don't have that luxury. Whether it's fair or not, it is what it is. Perception is not test of the law. And perception right now is that, okay, even though if PlayStation doesn't launch with it, we're going to get it at some point in time. That's the way people think. And you got to get people to think that way about you. So you got to do something big. And again, AAA, big old AAA, and Game Pass for 30 days, make it the exception of the rule, shell out the money to make it happen, to show fans that you're willing to work hard for them, and not just talk all this bibble babble, and you can start turning things around. You know what I'm saying? Because without something big like that, until at least Halo launches, Xbox mindshare growth attempts will continue to look grisly. And if they don't grow mindshare significantly, expect some mighty hefty drawbacks as a result. Guaranteed. And that's it from your boy, MM2K. Hey, yo, let me know what you think about what I had to say in the comment section below, because like I always say, who cares what I think? But if you did like what I had to say, check out the links below to follow me. Those links will lead you to the Broadband Bullies, PNTS Network, Hard Knock Digital Culture, and yes, the Stadia Dosage. And with all that being said, you all have a wonderful, wonderful gaming day. Peace.